Hey guys, this is Salvia, and I have been watching a lot of these tier videos lately. They have been stimming me the hell out, and I eventually came to the idea, what if I make one with my own? I thought that would be kind of fun. Fun for me to do, hopefully fun for y'all to listen to, but basically I do not want to review my own music. I feel like that's cheesy as shit. I don't know. I just, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to go and rate your music and rate my own shit. Um... So I figured this would be kind of a cool way to like get to talk about my stuff and sort of kind of rate it cheating. I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to start. Uh, this is not chronological. Um, I'm just going to pick from them chronologically, uh, make that a little bit more simple. But Demon Doggo Audio Curses, King Glacia, number one. This album, this is like the first album I ever did, basically. Um, like, yeah, God. It's, I had so many ideas, uh, but none of them, well, I shouldn't say none of them. They, they weren't, they weren't the best ideas. A lot of it, a lot of, a lot of these mashups were like, hey, this, th these two, these two songs have different keys. That's so funny. Um, and then listen to it for like three minutes. I don't know. And I, I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to listen to that these days. Um, but I feel like some things are pretty funny still, like, the 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 Fetty Wap song, uh, very fond of that. But overall, I just I feel like while it's fun to see like what I was thinking, while it's fun to just I guess see the the start of Hundeset, the start of uh, me publicly making music. I just I feel like it's not interesting enough, and the jokes don't land hard enough to make the whole thing super worthwhile. I uh, I'm gonna probably put it in either B or C, I'm going to put it in, mm, fuck, I'm going to put it in B for now, but it's probably going to go down to C the more things I put on here. Uh, I'm going to put it in C. So up next after that, we have the Hyperspace Fest live set. This was the first uh, quote unquote live show I ever did. It was a pre-recorded set, um, but oh my God, it was such a milestone. It was unbelievably fun. It was one of the most special moments of my life just so early on. Uh, I don't think of it very often these days. I kind of forgot about it until I was compiling all of these things, which is crazy, and I'm so happy that I've come far enough to, to think that. Um, but I just... I don't know. Actually, I think I need to remind myself what's on this album even. We got the intro, Gek on the Glass, Toothless, MTB, Hello Kitty. Yeah, it's all right. Um, this is a pretty good. This is this is a pretty good collection of my songs. I think um, very of its time. Definitely not my current style or what I want to continue to make. But um, these are songs that I'm still really, really happy with. Really, really proud of. Actually, yeah, this is looking to be kind of like a greatest hits thing, at least early on. I am going to put this for now. Okay, I'm gonna put it in C as well. I that might be crazy because like I'm thinking about like as an album, right? Like I probably shouldn't have put it on here, but I just, I put everything on the Bandcamp here, and I, I'm thinking like all the songs on are really good. But I mean, it's just the songs. It wasn't an actual live performance. It was very special to me. The songs I'm really proud of, but like, uh, I don't know. I, I I sure as shit enjoy listening to Audio Curses more than this random collection of songs. But um, we'll keep that there for now. See see how that goes. So then there's MTV. Um, I'm gonna. I I'm thinking either S or A, but I'm, I'm gonna put it in A. I I fucking love this song. Um, there are times that I wake up in a cold sweat in disbelief that I actually did this. Um, it definitely is a shocking reminder of how much farther I used to go. Um, I don't know if I could say that because I still have more crazy ideas that I want to do, but. I mean, I mean, good God! Some of the shit I say in here, I, I, I would not, I would not say today, um, especially publicly. This is definitely music I made before anyone knew me, but I think in its own way, it's, it's iconic. It's funny as hell. At least I think it's funny. It's, I've definitely grown out of like the whole furry comedy subgenre of, lol. The joke is sex, but like. I, I feel like I pulled something here. I don't know if I pulled something good, 
but something was pulled. So I- I'm gonna I'm gonna put that there for now. Um, I'm gonna stop worrying about finding these chronologically. That's just kind of annoying. Um, fan service, uh, S easy easy fucking S. Fan service is probably my favorite thing I've ever done. Um, I just it's like it's like out of all my music, there's like a, there's not a song on it that I, I regret. There's not a song where it's like oh I could have done this better. Like no I. I fucking love this album so much. It it spooks me because I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna make another thing like this? But fan service is an easy S. I absolutely love fan service. I think I captured what I want to capture in general with my music really, really well here. It's what I always wanted Mail Pup to sound like, but never quite knew how. So up next we got Feed Your Local Mail Pup. Let's see, honestly. I, I I don't I don't quite know how this is like one of my biggest songs. I don't think I did nearly enough with the instrumental. I, I, I put a shit ton of effort in the mixing and mastering of it. I think this was actually like the like the very first song I made that had like actual a lot of time put into the mixing and mastering. Um, and you could probably tell listening to my old music because everything was very, very gra- like grainy, distorted, just way too much. Uh, just not, not even remotely caring about the final product's sound and quality. Um, but I really kind of just almost like too sterile in this song. Like I just I feel like I, I spent so much time trying to make like a professional sounding song. Yes, it sounds cool dynamically. I guess if I'm listening to it with headphones, it's like it's so much more open and wide than most songs I've made. And like I respect it for that. But I just personally I just find it really boring. Um, it feels less like a remix and more like a just very vague uh, reinterpretation. I don't know. It just. It's just too much of the acapella, too little of the instrumental that I made under it. Um, it, I, it, it could have gone harder. I'm very glad people like it as much as they do. Also, that cover, um, speaking of shit, like, wow, I really used to just be fucking crazy. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it here for now. I, I, I do enjoy the songs on Hyper Hyperspace. Is it Hyperspace or Hyperdrive? I think it's Hyperspace. I enjoy them more, so I'm going to keep that there. We got Insanity up next. Fuck. Um... Okay, I, I, I want to put it in S because I adore this song, but like as much as in San, as much as fan service, I, but not as much as MTV. I mean, I, I like it more than MTV. I, oh my God. Um, okay, you know what? This needs another row. This, this needs another row. I'm going to add another row. So add a row below. I'm going to, um, not to spoil the future, but uh, we'll, we'll be saving this for later. We're going to have a new, a new tier. It's going to be, uh, yeah, there we go. Add a row below. Wait. Oh, wait, that's that's not how you do it. Ah! I don't know how to do this thing. So this is the new D row. Change the color. Make it green. All right, we're having fun. We're having fun. Okay. So uh, the that, that being said, I'm going to just... That's just going there. That's just going there, yeah. I, uh, that's going there. Oh uh, man, uh, so I've never talked about this. Um, I've never spoken about this. Uh, if you know me, if we're friends, you've probably heard me talk about it. But uh, I'm gonna finally set the record straight. I did not have monitor speakers for this performance. I could not hear myself, so I was constantly offbeat. I could not hear the music. I was guessing the whole time because TFS did not give me monitor speakers. Um, I also did not yet have my, uh, V, VT5, I think it's called my, yeah, my, my Roland, oh, VT4, my Roland VT4. I didn't have like a live setup for vocal effects. So I ran the whole fucking thing through little altar boy on logic. Cause like if I did an auto tune and a formant shift, it would have been way too much latency. So I had to just narrow it down to the most important plugin. And of course, little altar boy has auto tune built into it. So I was like, okay, I'll use this plugin instead. But you can't change the fucking key. It just auto snaps to whatever, whatever the hell. And that was uh, quite a problem because for most of that performance, I was singing perfectly fine on key, but it was just snapping to whatever fucking key, whatever, whatever note. And oh my God, is it nails on a chalkboard to me. Again, I'm really happy that people like it. It was the first actual in-person concert I ever did, so it was 
in the moment, one of the most fun things I've ever ha- I've ever done. One of the most fun times of my entire life. Um, I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity, but fuck me, does it sound terrible? I, you know, you 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 learn. It's a learning experience. I'm very grateful for the learning experience, but I don't want to listen to it. I'm gonna knock these down to D, and this down to C, and this down to B, so I can put insanity in A. That feels good. That feels better. Up next, we got Male Pup Self-Titled. This album, <clears throat> uh, it has such nostalgic quality to me, obviously. It's like the first, it's the first like real album I ever made because Demon Doggo Audio Curses was my first, but that was just like shit posts. Male Pup is like the first musical project I ever put together. And for that, obviously, it holds such a special case in my heart. It's such a special place in my heart. But I just... I kind of regret the last two songs. The thing with this album, I feel like it could have been an incredible EP, but instead it's a okay album. And I learned that later. I didn't repeat that mistake with fan service because fan service is short as shit. I realized like I can narrow it down to the best songs. It's 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 fucking quality over quantity, right? I I, I hate my space banger. It's I've, I've kind of grown into into my dog runs on Soylent, but my space banger I just I, I I personally think my space banger is like the worst song I've ever made um but the rest of it is really good I'm really happy with the rest of it I just I like to pretend my space banger doesn't exist I think I'm gonna put this in B as well above MTB uh yeah above MTB so up next we have more audio curses to play in the dark I adore this album. And it breaks my heart that no one knows about it. I feel like the albums that I really don't like get super popular. That's that's not true. That's a stupid thing to say. Fan service is like huge. Don't listen to my ass. But case in point, I fucking love this album so much. I don't know what the fuck I was like thinking at the time, but the ideas, the amount of just fucking insane evil genius moments I had on this album, I think are like unparalleled in my past i think this is probably the funniest thing i've ever done it's like my favorite like meme type thing i've done in my life um i think ma uh ma's not hot is like maybe the most batshit insane idea i've ever had i still can't believe it worked as well as it did i fucking love this album we're gonna put this in a as well we're gonna put it probably uh i'm gonna put it here yeah well, no. There we go. That's better. I cannot legally talk about this one just yet. Um, I cannot. However, make of that what you will. Have fun later. Up next is Real Estate Dog. And Real Estate Dog, holy fucking shit. Listen to my drunk commentary I did a few years ago if you want. Um... I spent four years on this album. Uh, it was like, it was supposed to be my first album, but I spent so long on it, and I had so many other ideas while making it. I came up with it when I was like a teenager. I I've been making it since 2017. I I just I put my whole fucking being into this. But weirdly, I I feel like it's kind of just like grown off of me. I still think Kinky Murder Machine is incredible. Um, I don't know how I pulled it. A lot of this album works because I really had no idea what the fuck I was doing. And because of that, it sounds really cool. I feel, at least to me, like I was just kind of just breaking logic and just doing whatever the fuck. But I feel like the songs aren't as interesting as I thought they were when I made them. And they don't change just enough. Like I love Kinky Murder Machine so much. I think it's one of my craziest songs. I don't go out as pretty cool, but like, the middle of it, the middle of it, I just feel like it's kind of just like, I have one idea and then I just kind of do it and I run it into the ground and then I move on to another idea and it's like, oh, that was an idea. It, it feels like, like a group of demos, honestly, which is crazy to say because like this was like when this came out, I was like, oh my God, it's my magnum opus. But like, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of grown off me a bit. I think that the beginning of the album and the end of the album are like the best things I've ever done. I, I adore the atmosphere of the album. I think it's a great snapshot of my like mental health at the time, but like I'm not going to throw it on and listen to it actively. I very, very rarely do. I'm thinking um, probably also an A. I'm going to put it like 
Oh, uh, man. I'm going to put it here. I feel, I, I feel like I... Yeah, this is going here. So up next, we have Singles 2020. I actually need a quick reminder of the track list of this. I, I don't know if it'll be as good. Um, well, let's see. Get kind of glass to this. I'll be in. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh. Okay. This is actually a lot better than I remember. Okay. Yeah. I. I fucking. I took off soft fuzzy man. Thank God. Um. Yeah, this is this this actually fucking really tracks. Wow. Um I love all of these. I I love pretty much all of these. Uh I'm probably going to put that like a high B. Uh definitely not as oh fuck. Okay. Well cuz like Mail Pup is so much more like important to me and so much more nostalgic to me. Like if I think of Singles 2020, I don't like I like I mean, if I think of my music, I don't think of singles 2020 i forget about it until i put back on my my web page and i see them all um shit i oh, oh man i really really these are good songs i yeah i'm gonna have to bump this above mail pop honestly i can't believe i'm saying that but i i really like that album i yeah I, no a honestly a i'm gonna put that like I'm gonna put that here. And then up next, we got Square Walker. Square Walker, I am incredibly proud of. It's a, just a really sweet song, I think. Um, it's my favorite lyrics I think I've ever made. Um, I made it for my boyfriend when we were long distance and we are no longer long distance. So it is really, really sweet and unbelievably surreal to listen back to it. Um, I really enjoy how little I can relate to it now which is crazy, but I I cannot relate to this song at all anymore, and that is one of the happiest feelings of my life. Um, I'm very proud of this. I think um, it could be a bit better mixed. It, the vocals really, um, I don't know. The vocals make me a little dysphoric, um, I, but I really love this song. I really, really love this song, and I'm going to put it in A for sure. Um, I think this song is probably better than anything off of singles. I'm gonna put it like, I'm gonna put it here. So Stay At Home Summer 2020 is next. This album is such a roller coaster of ups and downs. I really dislike the intro. I think it was such a weird choice. I wasn't confident enough to show my voice yet. And I just, it's got that goofy ass text to speech. Let's, let's, let's look into this track list actually. Cause this is a, such a fucking character of an album or a mixtape. I don't like Welcome to Stay at Home Summer. Hello Kitty is, I think, my biggest song as of now. I'm so amazed and grateful for that. Uh, I definitely think it's kind of a boring instrumental. Well, not boring. It's obviously insanely hyper, but like, it's so simple. I just, I feel like it's like such a, a, a case of like me having an idea and then not quite yet knowing where to take it elsewhere. Um, it's just, it's just that acapella with that one drum over it. I mean, it has a lot more energy than uh, Feed Your Local Mail Pup. So even though they're both kind of in the same boat of like, this is just an acapella file with like one layer of instrumental under it. Um, I think that this one works a lot better just because of how fucking like high energy it is. I do still like it a lot. I just, I, I, I wish I did a little bit more with it. MTV I already talked about, Legendary. <clears throat> uh, Wasp Brave, I think like in terms of quality, might be the best like original composition I've made as Mail Pup. I love this song. It kind of freaks me out just cause like I think back and I'm like, how the actual fuck did I make that? Um, I don't know. It's so out there. It's so like its own thing. I I've never made anything that sounds like that. Like Wasp Brave is like, it, it sounds like the kind of shit that I was listening to when I wanted to be Mail Pup. And I, I don't know who the fuck I channeled. I don't know how I channeled it. I'd like to have that again at some point, but like, hot damn, I fucking love Wasp Brave. Purple Slurple, I think is super underrated. I'm also a pretty big fan of this. Dueling Gabas, I still think is funny, but I don't think the joke lands, and that's the problem. Like, like I, I, I don't know how many people listen to it and think I'm being serious, because uh, that's scary if that's true, because this is a terrible, terrible song. 
Uh, I was definitely just like, this This mixtape is not long enough. I need more shit on it. Uh, here's some silly idea I have, and then I threw it on there. Uh, I don't regret its placement, but I do wish I like it's either... It, it should be shorter. There, there, there should be like more of a clear designation that it's a joke, I think. Um, I don't know if the joke actually lands. It lands for me, so that's what really matters, but, like, I also hope it doesn't, like, actively make someone else hate the album and think I'm that bad. And then this one's for the 2000s Furries is one of my all-time favorite songs I've ever made as well. It's just, it's so deeply nostalgic to me. It was back then, because I sampled things that were nostalgic to me, and now it's, like, double nostalgic, because it makes me think about when I made it. And, uh... Yeah, better than I remember, honestly. Better than I remember. It's not better than Male Pup self-titled, I don't think. Well, fuck. The fuck. Um. <laughs> the shit. Shit. Um. Oh, man. Um. Because Male Pup self-titled is, like, a significantly better project as a whole. But I think the songs on Stay at Home are better. I was stylistically growing, um... Fuck. Okay, I, I'm gonna leave it there, but no on any given day, depending on my mood, I might... No, I can't. I cannot in good faith do that. These are very equal albums to me, even though like this one I feel is like a significantly higher quality. The nostalgia and like just how iconic this album is to me... Jesus Christ, hang on. I... All right, we're gonna we're gonna take a peek at Male Pup real quick. Ah, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, I can't I can't put that above Male Pup. Last but not least, we have Webkin's Lid Nyan Nyan Dance. Um, is it S tier? Is it S tier? Not quite, but I adore it. It is my favorite single I've ever made. I love this song so much, so fucking much. I. Okay, y'all, this is my enjoyment, not me saying this is objectively better. Obviously, Real Estate Dog is, like, a whole fucking thing. But I just love this song. I just fucking love this song so goddamn much. Um, I think it's the most addicting song I've ever made, uh, and the numbers seem to be agreeing, and that makes me extremely happy. Thank you all so much for enjoying it that much. I fucking love that song. Um... I don't know if I could put it above Real Estate Dog in good faith, though. I mean, it's a one-minute little song versus this whole fucking... Yeah, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I do adore this, though. And fan service and uh, She Who Shall Not Be Named Yet, I think... Am I going to stick with this placement? Uh, no, I'm not. All right. Here we go. This is the uh, Hundeset tier list, at least in my opinion... Uh, do you love it? Do you hate it? What would you rate it? As they say, uh, let me know if you agree. Let me know if you think I'm insane. I'd love to hear y'all's ranking in the comments. Uh, I'm a very small channel, so I hope that doesn't sound, uh, algorithm boosty. I'm not fishing for anything. Uh, I just would love to hear what y'all think. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Thanks y'all. Love you. Bye.